and welcome to the replay viewers. I know there's quite a few people that are catching the replay. So delighted to have you either here live or catching the replay. I hope that wherever you're tuning in from, it is as warm and sunny as it is here. It's just fabulous. Okay, so I want to first start by introducing myself. I know most of you that, that will be watching this know me, but if you don't, I just want to say a quick hi. My name is Neve. It is pronounced Neve, even though it's spelled N-I-A-M-H. It's a good Irish name. I am a coach and also a coach trainer. I'm the founder of the Fired Up Coaching Academy, which is a self-coaching program with a coaching certification option as well. I'll share about that at the end. I am um, based in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm Irish. I've lived here. I came here 30 years ago, lived in seven countries total, but this is home. This is where my three children are. So this feels, even though my, I'm, of course, I'm Irish, <laughs> but um, yeah, Geneva is where I'm living. I use a four pillar flow strategy with my clients. I have been coaching since 2009. I started, I really, um, I think I was always coaching actually. I was always interested in it and I always loved to help people. But actually to, the first formal training that I did was I certified to become a, um, a facilitator of the work of Byron Katie. And that was a really deep and powerful, nearly four year training, very intensive. And I really learned to hold space for clients um, who are going through stress and trauma. And I worked through a lot of my stress and shifted it, uh, read through some of my blogs. I do mention the work of Byron Katie often. It's a fabulous uh, inquiry to, for, to inquire into your beliefs because our stress does not come from the outside world, but from inside our head and our beliefs um, when we argue with reality and believe that reality should be different than it is. That's basically what causes stress. However, that's not the topic for today. <laughs> I just want to briefly uh, share how I work. Um, I use the popular flow strategy, help my clients to feel fired up. You'll understand during this uh, masterclass what I mean by that. Um, I guide my clients to lead themselves, to be a leader with high emotional intelligence. I coach them to optimize their mind, their body, and their spirit, the whole package, <laughs> and to win with their daily habits. I'm a massive, massive uh, believer in the power of daily habits to change your life, which you'll hear a lot of it on this masterclass too. Also, in, we need courage if we want to achieve something or if we want a positive change, we need courage to stretch outside their comfort zone. We need a lot of courage, and I help them to achieve their goals. My intention, always, I set an intention at the start of every coaching session, at the start of everything, really. It's great, you know, it's really like, okay, what do, what do I most want everybody that watches this masterclass to get from it? So I want you to leave this masterclass with either a new skill, if you're brand new to coaching, or a refined skill. Maybe you're already coaching, and this is just going to give you more food for thought. Honestly, I'm reading a lot of coaching books, and we're, you know, always sharpening the saw. If you've uh, read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talks about sharpening the saw, and it's really, you know, refining, getting better at your craft. So I, I hope that you will um, pick up some good tips here. And to in order to get the most from yourself and from your life. Okay, now I can't see, hang on, my, my video is blocking the agenda. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just put myself in the corner. The agenda, you are going to discover exactly what an inner coach is and how it can help you. That's what I'm gonna share first. It's gonna be some good food for thought. Um, you're going to learn three practical techniques to develop your inner coach. And you're going to explore how to set up your inner coach to ensure long-term success. Not something short-term, but long-term. Okay, so what is an inner coach? What do you think is an inner coach? You know, if you reflect on that, what does it mean to you? So it, it really is like an, an alter ego. It's, you know, a part of you. We have different, we play different roles in life. You know, for me, for example, I am a mother, I am a passionate fitness a strength training person, I am a sister, I am a daughter, I am a friend with lots of different roles. But another role, and I am a coach, but also I am an inner coach. I am a coach for me inside, right? So 
it's fabulous if you can ignite that inner coach because <laughs> you've also got that inner saboteur, the one who likes to say, you're not good enough. They're better than you. You're doing it wrong. Mm, you'll never succeed. Mm. So the inner coach is fabulous at quieting that saboteur, that, that, that really sabotaging voice and helping you to succeed. So your inner coach helps you to set and to achieve goals. Oops, oh my God, what the heck? <laughs> Okay, let's go back. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. A little, a little diversion. Uh, slideshow. Okay, there we are. Uh, your inner coach gives you the ability, ability to perspective shift, otherwise known as framing. And I actually heard, I love to tell you, he was chatting with, hmm, I can't remember who, it was Lewis Hauser or somebody, and they were just talking about like the number one thing that helps people in life. And it's like, it's perspective. Everything is, is perspective, which is basically the story that you tell about your circumstances and your life. And it can be a positive story, an empowering one, or it can be a victim negative story. And it's also known as framing. Frames are the mental structures that shape the way you see the world. So if you want to see the world, your world in a more positive life, you've got to know how to reframe. Your inner coach will help you how to reframe. The ability to reframe is everything. Um, ask yourself like a quick fix to a quick, a great question to keep asking yourself, you know, when, when you notice that you're like, oh, about something. If the universe is friendly, why is this a good thing? This is happening. And trusting also that it's happening for you, not to you. If we're in victim mode, it's happening to us. We are the victim of it. But if we're if we choose an empowered perspective, if we reframe it, we'll say, this is happening for me. This is happening for me. I'm building mental strength. I'm building character. I'm learning something here. Now I know that if ever a client that I'm working through goes through that challenge, I'll, I'll really understand them because I went through it. For example, you know, it's like everything's a learning. So look for the positive perspective in everything and really choose to believe. It's a choice, right? You know, um, choose to believe that life is happening for you, or everything in it. Dig for the gold and you will always find it. Dig for the gold. I always think um, I used to live in Nairobi and I worked with women from the Nairobi slums and my Swahili was definitely not very strong and their English was not great, but I used to always like literally, you know, use that. Okay, let's dig for the gold. I had a, an interpreter that was working with me that was helping, but um, just just remember that dig for the gold. And the deeper you dig, the more gold you will find in whatever is happening in your life. Because actually the number one thing in order to raise our vibration and to feel good in life is to look for the good in everything. Gratitude, appreciation. If you want to start feeling better, start start telling a different story and your inner coach will help you to do that so journaling is a great way to inner coach put it on paper so every morning I journal after I do my yoga meditation I'm doing interval sprinting in the morning as well with my dog right now and um and then after my shower I have breakfast and I journal that's my I'm, I'm a creature of habit and that is the way, you know, I, I have it stack. I stack my habits on top of each other. So journaling is very much just a part of, and I really enjoy it. I really love that time. And, you know, I, I sometimes journal later in the day as well. Actually, mid-morning, I was at, I discovered this awesome coffee shop near where I live. And um, so I did some journaling there too. It was just so nice on the sofa. And, um, you know, it's really, it's putting your thoughts on paper and then asking yourself, um, you know, so how do I feel about this? What do I want to do about this? And kind of coaching you through it. Really, I'll tell you something about coaching, if either coaching yourself or others. What you want to do is bring yourself or the other person, you want to bring them further along in a positive direction, not staying stuck. So coaching is not, let's say if we're coaching somebody else, it's not just talking about, oh yeah, that really sucks. I mean, sometimes it's nice to it is helpful to talk about a situation and the person, the client needs to just let it out, but to be stuck there without any kind of solution. It's coaching is solution oriented. So, you know, you, you're going to want to ask questions around, well, what do you think would be the next best step to feeling better, to moving this forward, et cetera. So you're doing the same thing if you're coaching yourself. You're looking at, okay, I feel stuck or I'm not achieving this goal or I don't know what to do. 
what's the next best step I can take in order to progress with this situation? Put it on paper, put it on paper. Okay, so these are 10 questions. If you signed up for this masterclass, um, you would have received the 10 questions. If you haven't, if you're just catching this masterclass and did not um, opt in, then let me know and I'll send you these. I, I created a nice graphic with these 10 questions. I'm not going to go through them all, but these are 10 questions that honestly, I believe everybody should ask themselves and, you know, to get perspective and to, to really contemplate, well, where am I going? What do I truly, truly want? And what else? And what else is a very powerful question in coaching? And what else? Because you get, you, you go deeper. What is it in the depths of your being? So you can just contemplate that now. You know, if, if money wasn't an object and I had no obstacles in the depth of my being, what do I truly, truly, truly want? You know, you might say, oh yeah, well, to live on, to live beside a beach in some warm country. And and then your saboteur might come in and say, yeah, but that's impossible. <laughs> and then that's why you hire a coach and say, somebody to say, well, is it impossible? If that's what you really want, let's look at how we can make it possible. <laughs> But think about what you truly, truly, truly want. What what impact you want to have in your life? What if you want to leave a legacy? If that's important to you, or think about that. And then, what's really important is to look at your vision ten or even twenty years from now. You know, what is your long term vision? You know, that's really it's like that's the direction you're going. If you look at where you want to go in a year from now, you might achieve it and then kind of be like, oh, you kind of might realize that you're had the ladder on the wrong wall, <laughs> that you get to the top of the ladder and you're like, oh, this is not the wall I want to be on. <laughs> so it is really good to think about, you know, what is my long-term vision? Typical example is maybe somebody who decides, well, I want to really advance in my career. Um, and in, it's a woman in her thirties and um, then puts all her energy into her career and then realizes when it's too late that, I actually wanted a family and, you know, time, unfortunately, uh, sometimes runs out. So that's why that's one example of why it's really important to have a long term vision. So these are questions that I really encourage you to ask yourself if you're not crystal clear on where you're going. It can feel stressful, by the way, because it's like, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Number one. So that's why it's good to touch. And number two, um, it's like sometimes we're afraid to claim those dreams and future vision because that means that we actually have to do something to achieve them and it's like oh I like my comfort zone here I'd have to change and I'm not sure I want that and but you know really then thinking about well will I be happy with myself if I choose not to change there's no right or wrong but just making peace with it if you decide well, I don't really want to have any kind of a vision or deciding okay I'm going to do this. What resources do I need? What support do I need? What new mindset do I need in order to achieve that goal? What new behavior, what new habits? It's all possible with the right support, the right mindset, and the will to succeed. So what changes do you need to make in order to achieve your goals? <laughs> That's one of these uh, 10 questions. Um, what's your life mission? And number 10 is super important. How will you ensure Oh, sorry, number nine is what might your biggest obstacles to achieving the goal be? And then number 10, how will you ensure those obstacles don't hold you back? That's very, very important. When you're setting a goal, think about, okay, what are the potential challenges I'll have? I mean, a very simple example for me, you will see later in this masterclass, um, a weight loss goal that I have for a particular reason. And so what I definitely need to do is not have any kind of chocolate or you know um, chips for example that I don't have them in the house because otherwise um, yeah it's uh, <laughs> that would be an obstacle to my success for example so it's really thinking about it strategically so there are some good questions you can ask yourself to ignite your inner coach and here are some strategies, practical strategies to develop a strong inner coach. Okay, comment below if this is making sense, if this is resonating with you, ask me any questions that you have about your inner coach, I'm very happy to answer them. Also for the replay viewers, please don't hesitate, any questions. Okay, so practical strategies for to develop, <laughs> I should delete that for. Practical strategies to develop a strong inner coach because you want, this is, you know, it's so, 
I don't want to sound negative, but it's the truth, you know, that most people don't succeed with their goals. Really got to develop that inner strength. Knowing that, it's like, okay, so what do I need to do to develop it then? But it's really important to know that because you're going to be up against, you're going to be up against a lot of resistance, inner resistance and outer resistance. So your vision, number one, is having a compelling vision that you are emotionally connected to. And the way that I get emotionally connected, well, actually, I didn't even write it here as I pray. You know, I, I ask God, please help me um, to feel that emotional connection because it's not always there. It's something you have to work on. You have to actively cultivate because I know the importance of that emotional connection. I've really got to turn up the volume on it. So that, by the way, um, a, a fired up coach, the fired up coaching academy, that's something that I strongly emphasize. And that's why the name where the name fired up came from, because you've got to feel fired up about it. If you don't feel fired up about it, you're not going to achieve it. Too simple, as they say in French, <laughs> simply put, you're not going to achieve it. You've got to have a compelling vision that you are emotionally behind. And that wanes, so you've got to keep on working on it. And that really is your why. Why do I want to achieve this exciting vision? It has to be something that you're excited about. If you're not, then because, um, and here, let me use, I think this is a good example. Because I'm in a, a fitness competition, um, to win a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and it ends on September 10th. So the last 12 weeks right now, what I'm doing is, um, eating a lot, which is great. Um, <laughs> while it lasts and going to the gym, um, strength training five days a week, uh, to build my muscle. But for the last 12 weeks, I gradually have to reduce my calories, keep my food very healthy. And, um, I have to drop six kilos, which might seem like a lot, but it's okay. I'm still going to be healthy, <laughs> but it's really too, uh, because then the, you know, you can see the, the, the muscle effect when you're ripped basically. Um, so, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not so easy. Like right now I'm thinking, Oh, it's getting, you know, it's the, it's the 18th of June is when I have to start being really, really strict. And just like, Oh, that's not going to be fun. You know, that's not going to be so much fun when I have to, you know, really get strict. But if I, I have a very compelling why, why I want to do this, you know, I have, I want to compete on stage. I want to, you know, for me, it's, I think it requires such discipline and I, I really understand the value of doing hard things and pushing ourselves outside our comfort zone. I really understand how that benefits us. And I'm a coach. I want to inspire my clients. I want to inspire those that follow me. So I see it as a very, as a beneficial thing for me to do personally and for my work. Also, it's fun to look good. It's inspiring for my kids. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be super healthy. I'm, I'm reasonably healthy right now. But, um, you know, it's, and also it's like just developing that habit, you know, of, um, you know, the structured eating, etc. So I have to really connect with that why, because when the chocolate bar is there and it looks really compelling, I have to remember my compelling vision and remember why I'm sticking to a meal plan. And obviously also, by the way, there's a chance that I win a hundred thousand dollars. So <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> and there's 10 prizes. So, you know, there's, there's lesser cash prizes as well. So why the heck not? You know, um, I, I love just that part of the human experience, striving towards things and having a focus. So there you go. So that's just an example I'm sharing with you, you know, why, uh, you know, that, that, compelling vision is so important because you know when temptation strikes and it will because you know other temptation will strike and here's why if if you're not there yet and you haven't achieved it yet it's because you haven't got the habits in place in order to achieve it so that requires change and we resist change and we we feel tempted to go back to our comfort zone so it's it's a no brainer like it, it, that that resistance and challenges are going to arise, but the more compelling the vision is, the the easier those um, challenges will be to resist the temptations. Okay, so do hard things to strengthen your spirit. So you have a very strong inner coach if you are doing hard things. That's why I always say you know, coaching certifications are really personally I believe they're not worth much if you're working with a coach that isn't doing hard things, if you're working with a coach that isn't stretching outside their comfort zone, 
you can only bring clients as far as you came yourself. So that's again why I do hard things because I'm, I'm good at what I do and I want to get better at what I do. It's important to me. I'm, I take pride in my work. So that's why I do hard things. So on that note, 75 hard, I actually announced and I was going to start it on the 1st of June. Um, 75 hard is, oh, I can't remember the name of the guy, but I, I shared a blog about it. This guy, basically he struggled. He was apparently quite overweight. You know, he was more than 300 pounds and he uh, was struggling. And so he set himself this challenge of doing two by 45 minute workouts every day or some kind of exercise every day, reading 10 pages of a book every day, no sugar, no alcohol, and following a strict meal plan plus drinking lots of water, speaking of which. So I decided, I thought, oh, okay, I'll do that. That will be good. But actually I've decided not to do it, not to start until the 18th of um, June because that's kind of D-Day and I shouldn't call it D-Day, <laughs> but that's the start of the 12 week countdown for the, this, this is the six month competition and it ends on the 10th of September. So, um, that, but that's just an example. 75 hard is extremely hard and it's, it's promoted as not as a fitness challenge, but as a mental strength challenge. This is all about building mental strength. And I'm really passionate about, I always, if I go, it's rare that I watch Netflix, but if I do, I always um, end up watching a sports documentary. I just love um, the mindset of people who have really succeeded in sport. Um, I've just finished watching Conor McGregor. Oh my God, incredible discipline and hard work that he, uh, as an MMA fighter, um, have, what, what, he, what he does to, in order to succeed. Um, whatever you think about Conor, Conor McGregor personally, nobody can fault him for his hard work and discipline. And, you know, that's, it, it really helps me. You know, I kind of channel those and David Goggins is another one, Can't Hurt Me. He wrote this great book called Can't Hurt Me. David Goggins says um, he runs long distance, very long distance, like ultra marathons. And he's got a, a Guinness World Record for doing pull-ups. I think he did like 4,000 something pull-ups in 24 hours something crazy like that <laughs> but the hard things strengthen your spirit and they give you self-confidence and you because you then you can say i did that i'm proud of myself this is why you know it's like and and then we inspire others to make positive changes as well so your inner coach is going to help you to do that but it's important to develop a system with goals not just airy fairy yes i'm going to do that be really strategic about it and keep yourself accountable. And this is something I think this was the missing link, I would say, in my coaching that I've really gotten better at and refined is um, you know, that system approach and measuring. I'm excited for what I'm going to share with you now about, you know, making it much more likely that you will achieve your goals rather than not. Because so it's it's setting your your inner coach up to ensure long-term success and even short-term success, achieving your goals. Um, so change is hard. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me there. And I really want to emphasize that because, you know, me doing like this fitness challenge and other goals that I have, they're not easy. And, and I think, and actually the guy who, who created 75, Andy, Andy Ravella is his name. He said, you know, like, it's not easy for him too. I think it's, it's a myth. It's a mistake that people think that, oh, well, they, they're more motivated than me, so they have it easier. No, it's damn hard. It really is, and I really want to emphasize that. Even my coach in Ireland, my, um, because I have a, have a coach that I work with, I send him my workouts for accountability, et cetera. And, um, you know, I know he struggles too. He's very open, very human about it. But, you know, if you saw him, like you would say, oh, wow, so successful. But, you know, it it's really requires grit and courage and perseverance and, on the days you failed, picking yourself back up. It's not all daisies and roses. You know, change is hard. That's a fact. So we need tools. We need strategies to help us to get through the difficult days and moments. There is a very interesting book called Change or Die, which I read recently. And basically a summary of it, there's a few examples, but there was 90% of patients with heart disease. They were basically told, if you, they did, I think they did in, in the initial uh, story, these people, they did um, surgery and they said, okay, you're good now, but you, 
will only be good if you change your habits. Like if you continue with the same habits, you're going to die. Like, it, you know, it's you've got to change or you're going to die. And 90% of them did not change. So this was really distressing. There was some hospital apparently that followed them and said, like, this is insane. Like, why are they not? Like, we've told them they're going to die. Isn't that enough reason to want to change? But it was very, very interesting that actually people who don't feel so good in their lives, it's like, well, it's not such, you know, if I die, well, at least my pain will go away, kind of, you know, that was the motivation uh, or the la why there was a lack of motivation, I should say. But then the book talks about how in another study with 333 participants, it went, the success rate went from basically 10% because 90% failed, so 10% success to, in this study, 77% succeeded. And so the book talks about why that was. There's, there's a few examples, but it was really interesting about why that was. Why do you think that was? <laughs> Let me just uh, check the comments for a moment and see. Rose is here. Hi, Betty, Julia. Wonderful. Yes, David Goggins is brilliant. Absolutely. Delighted you guys are here. <laughs> okay. So what they did in the new study was they had a supportive community they, because previously in when they, they were just told, okay, go home and change your habits, but they didn't get any support. There was no group support to help them. They were alone, right? Um, that, was, uh, that was one thing. And also it was kind of like, if you don't change, you're gonna die. And so if they didn't have very exciting lives, then you know maybe they're not so motivated to live. But so the two changes were a supportive community. They had a group support to achieve their goals plus also a compelling future vision. Now, it doesn't say compelling future vision in the book. I think it says, um, you know, uh, goals that they were excited about or a future that they were excited about. And they really focused on, hey, you're gonna get, get to play with your grandchildren. You're gonna get to um, inspire them more. You're gonna get to experience nature more. And they, got to, they, they helped them to, it's like, this is what you've got to live for. So that was it. You, you've got to have a vision that excites you and you've got to have a community that will support you that's on the same journey as you. I loved the, that study and that book. And I mean, the evidence is there, right? And so this is why we either fail or we succeed. A compelling vision, but it's not just a compelling vision. Then it's like with a, a good strategy on how to get there, right? So that requires us. So I'm going to share with you how to do that now. I'm so excited about this. I mean, it's, that's, I think what I'm most passionate is helping people to really achieve their goals, no matter what goal it is, to overcome ourselves. Because I know, I know how hard it is to, to overcome ourselves, but I also know it's possible with the right support and the right strategy. So let's, aha, a vision and a strategic plan. This is what is really important. So I developed myself, <laughs> and I can't take credit for it. It's called the Fired Up System. Um, that's what I've developed inside my um, Fired Up Coaching Academy that I'm with everybody that joins. I'm doing these uh, four times 12 week sprints. And there's a great book called The 12 Week Year. And that's what I've started to practice the, the 12 week year myself. And I thought, oh my God, I'm from now on, I'm doing this with all my clients because I feel like it's it's just so necessary to for for, having that st strategy to, to help us to achieve our goals. So the way it works is you first identify either, you know, like I said, in those the coaching questions at the start, you identify, you start with your 10 year plan or even 20 year, if you wanna have fun with it, knock yourself out 20 years. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, I wanna share something. So when I get to Geneva, um, and I think, I, yeah, I was like, I hadn't, I had no children yet. I was not married or maybe I was just married and had no children yet. But I remember going, I, you know, I, I enjoyed personal development, maybe the odd book, but I definitely wasn't passionate about it. You know, um, I think when I was in school, I never really allowed myself or never really, you know, talked about what would really light you up and be really passionate. Oh God, sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> but, um, but but then I remember going to a workshop, a one day workshop, and we had to create a 10 year vision. And I remember feeling like it was corny. You know, I was really I was so, you know, not into personal development. 
But I promise you that everything on that vision, nearly everything, I would love to, I wish I still had the paper, but I remember things, you know, I wanted to have three children and, you know, there was lots of things on there that came true. Um, so it really is powerful. It's amazing. And I've had clients come back to me, old clients, like, oh, you know, thanks to you and in that program, you know, and I achieved that. And But it's, so there is great power in claiming it, claiming your 10 year, uh, three year and one year vision. And then what you do is you, you identify, okay, you get, you, get, you get it down to your one year vision and then look at one to three major goals for, you break it down into, okay, so in one year there is uh, four times 12, which is 48 weeks. And you have a break of a week between, that makes 52 weeks. Sorry, that's a little bit mathematical. But so you break the one year vision, but you're basically reverse engineering. And you're saying, okay, let me now focus on the one year, uh, on three, on 12 weeks. Um, and I'm gonna do that four times for my one year vision. So what do I want to achieve in uh, that milestone, that 12 week milestone? So you identify between one and three major goals for your first 12 week period. I would not recommend doing three. I've, you know, I've looked into this a lot and I'm working with it myself now. And I can really see that I have two major goals and I would not do more because if you, you've, you've got to narrow your focus, you've really got to narrow your focus and be very committed to it. If you've got too many things going on, you're just gonna, you're not gonna succeed. So less is more, make them exciting. You've got to have that strong emotional connection. You've got to continuously work on feeling fired up about the goals and that is a work then list the strategic actions that you will take to get there in the 12-week year books they call them uh and the 12-week year program actually the program as well they call them tactics but tactics i think they're actions that we take strategic actions and i like using the word strategic personally because you know you want to be very clear that it's that it's the right action you know there you don't want too many actions so you, it really requires brainstorming you know i spent a long time looking at the actions that i'm going to take and it's like okay am i just writing that down or is that actually an, an important action because what you do is you score yourself on them it's great <laughs> for accountability i'm a little geeking out on this whole strategy so for each strategic action you decide is that a daily action or a weekly action so for example one of mine to lose the six kilos is I'm going to a uh, meal plan and cook my meals on the Sunday for the week. I noticed that for me, 50%, at least 50% of the reason why I touch is I haven't prepared my meals and I just want a quick fix. But if my meals are there and I just have to heat them up, oh, it's just, it's a game changer. So that would be one, that, but that's a weekly action, right? But then a daily action would be like the mindset work, for example, the, the connecting emotionally with my vision. That is a daily action. And then you have to score them. And it's fantastic. Here's the part I really geek out on. They did the research and the guys that did the 12 week year. And they said, basically, if you get 83% or above, they sometimes have heard them say 80%, let's say 83%. If you score, that means that you have an 83% consistency with your strategic actions, you'll achieve your goal you'll achieve your goal. Isn't that exciting? It's quite kind of foolproof. So it's like, you know, really to be in that top 10% of people that will definitely achieve their goals, this, this is the way to do it. Your human might resist it because, oh, that's a lot of work and I don't like to have uh, discipline and structure, but hey, do you want to achieve your goal or not? <laughs> and it's like, if you don't seem that excited about it, then it's not a goal that you're emotionally behind. And maybe you haven't looked at in enough detail what the benefit of it would be. You know, when you think, like, oh, yeah, that benefit and that benefit and that benefit, and then find 10 more benefits, sell it to yourself. And then you'll think, oh, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it to do the work in order to get there. So I want to show you, oh, you need to score at least 80 percent to reach your goal. And it's great because that's part of the process that you score every Monday morning, you spend time, excuse me, um, scoring plus setting your, you know, looking at if, if you need to adjust anything for the next week. So it's, it's just fabulous. I mean, and it's really taking responsibility because, um, and you might think, oh, I don't have time, but this is time well spent, really well spent because 
then it's like a mirror. It's like, oh, well, if I didn't, you know, if it's measured, what gets measured gets managed, so they say, you know, and you look at, oh, well, I only scored 60% there because I didn't do it every day. And um, yeah, so there I need to ensure that I do it every day, for example. So here's, I, I have, um, I'm in there, <laughs> they have a, a software. And so I, but you don't need the software inside the part of Coaching Academy. Um, I have a Google file with the same thing as this. But it is, I must say, it, it is nice to have a to have it and just to, it's easier, it's user friendly, um, the system that they have. So here it is, here's my lose, kilo, lose six kilos by 10th September. And um, that's meal planning interval sprints that should be every morning to uh, raise my metabolism. Um, then there's the mindset work, the incantations, journaling, etc. cetera. Uh, I noticed if I get the munchies, you know, if I have, uh, raw carrot, especially, and I can dip it in yogurt. Then that really is it's a good way for me of uh, you know when I am craving something. It's a good way for me to get through that. And then logging in my fitness pal, I used to log my food. So those are things that I know are going to help me to achieve my goals. So what I do then at the end of every week is I tick them. Yes, did I do that? Did I do that? And you basically, and it's amazing. It shows you a graph. Uh, of, of your progress it's fabulous and so what I did here on purpose I, I uh, did not click on my fitness pal log because imagine one day I forget it so I can't give myself uh, I can't say yes I completed it so you see at the top where it says 80 percent that would have been a hundred percent if I had done my my fitness pal log so it's really like <laughs> I would not want to miss a day. I don't want to miss a day of logging my fitness pal because I want to be able to give myself the 20% there. <laughs> and it's great. It's very visual to, um, uh, to th that you can see the 80%, right? And that you can see the, the graph. So it really, really is great to have that accountability. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so those are the, the strategies that I would say are really, really powerful as, and you know, that accountability, that measurement, smart goals are called actually. Smart goals are, they should be strategic. They should be uh, measurable. You should be held accountable for them. They should be realistic. Um, and T, what's the T in smart goals? I forget. Uh, realistic and, oh darn it, comment below if you know what the T is <laughs> in smart. Oh, that's going to annoy me. <laughs> anyway, um, so they should be, you know, goals that, that that are realistic and that are achievable. And that's where you get your confidence. And it's also learning, right? It's like, okay, you learn about yourself. Okay, there I need to develop there. And then looking at, so I'm not managing to stick to my meal plan. Why is that? What is it? What is it? So do I need to, to hire somebody to help me? Do I need to... What else can I do? What else can I do? And your inner coach will help you. Your inner coach is really like your cheerleader that's supporting you to get to your goals. And this inner coach is a very positive voice. It's, it's you know, if, if the negative saboteur comes, the inner coach goes, well, how can I put a positive slant on that? Also, for example, for me, you know, if I catch myself judging or being annoyed at somebody or uh, annoyed at my children, I release and I, I pray to God to help me to release it and to accept everyone the way they are, because that causes stress, right? When we argue with reality, we have stress. And um, so I just, my inner coach helps me to release and to, you know, feel grateful for everyone and everything in my life. And it's just being mindful and conscious of that. But honestly, you know, it's taken me years and I still have to work on it because, you know, those neural pathways in our brain, <laughs> they're really stubborn. So rewiring them, it takes just a, a constant uh, working on them. But I love it. I mean, I geek out on it, as you might have noticed. <laughs> and it's it's just that challenge of overcoming ourselves and uh, to not only experience, but to be a joy to be around and to be able to inspire others and feel good about ourselves, right? Okay, so what I want to share, like I said, you know, it's, you've got such a low chance of success. I'm not saying like, you're screwed if you do this on your own. <laughs> I would say, go for it, go for it. But I would love to invite you inside the Fired Up Coaching Academy, because having that community that has your back, plus that emotional support to help you to really connect with your goals will make all the difference. 
And I'm starting the first of the 12 sprints is on the 18th of June. So um, it would be a really good time to get in now because um, you can prepare and you can really evaluate and I can help you uh, support you to get your strategic actions down because it's that's that part is important and to know how you're going to measure them so you get 12 months membership to the fired up coaching academy when you join and that means you have access to two weekly live group mentoring calls via zoom on tuesdays and thursdays um you know as more people join then i will adjust the time zones because i know that there's people from all over the world and i want to make sure that everyone gets at least one live call where they're not sleeping during that time <laughs> um you get access to four 12-week fired up sprints so like i said oh it's monday the 19th of june sorry the 18th is the sunday so the 19th of june is when the first sprint starts and that's where you'll start your 90 days for your goal so you'll do the the 10-year vision the three-year vision the one-year vision and then you'll look at okay those 12 weeks what do i want to achieve it can just be one goal or I would say two. If you want to have three, make the third one. I actually, you know, originally I was going to put a third one for myself, which was uh, deep in my connection with God, because that's really important to me. But I do that naturally anyway. And I thought I just don't want to have too many actionables, etc. You know, less is more. So I would say two, two good goals, one or two. Because obviously, if you've just got one goal, right, you're going to be even more driven to achieve it and have more time, I would say. You get lifetime access to the Fired Up Coaching Academy content. So the Fired Up Coaching Academy content, there's five modules and the modules, yeah, I have them listed here. So um, body, the physical component, that is health and fitness, the mind, which is everything from cognitive behavioral therapy, emotional intelligence, and resilience is the mind module. Uh, spirit, that is the prayer, meditation, God. And if you don't, if that doesn't resonate with you, the word God, you can replace it with life, the universe, higher power, etc. cetera. Um, and then there's the coaching module, which is the, um, it's 10 lessons, 10, these are, um really you know in-depth 10 in-depth lessons and i'm spacing them out throughout the year already from the first lesson you'll really have a good understanding of how to coach you know basic coaching skills plus there's um uh, works you know to read with instructions but really you're going to benefit you know how you're going to become a coach and by the way you don't need to go for the coaching certification it could be just uh you could just want to be a brilliant inner coach for yourself which is totally totally fine but you will get a certification if you also complete actually it's 50 coaching hours originally it was going to be 100 coaching hours but if you do 50 good hours and you show up for the year you're going to be a good fired up coach and the final module is the business module and that's about marketing and business strategy if you want to have a coaching business because why not and if you're thinking oh well i'm too young or i'm too old you can inspire people your age, no matter what age you are. Um, so really, please have a chat with me. I'd be delighted to get on a quick call with you. If you're kind of like, oh, this is really speaking to me, in which I say, go for it. I'm all for, you know, if it speaks to your heart. But, um, you know, if you've got any hesitations, then I'd be happy to uh, exchange with you about those. But, you know, there's one exceptional part about the part of coaching academy and this is you know the type of coaches that i want to certify are ones that are living it not just know the theory of how to coach but that you're really living it in your life you know that you're taking care of your body your mind and your spirit because like i said we can only bring our clients as far as we've gone so um you know embodying that fired up mentality is really going to serve you and your clients there is a VIP option if you want, if you really are not so excited about the group option and you prefer one to one, then you can at the, at the moment, by the way, just financially, it's the investment for the group option is $500 a month or $5,000 if you pay upfront. So you can save a thousand. Um, that's for the group component. And for one to one, it's $1,000 a month or 10,000 if you pay upfront and you save 2,000. So with the VIP option, you get uh, for monthly, mm, that's that they're, they should say weekly. <laughs> you get one, one call a week, basically, for a month um, on business and mindset coaching or whatever coaching that you uh, would most benefit from. 
And you get four months of private Voxer support with me. The Voxer support is very powerful, the voice memo support. And it's just an extra edge with um, voice memoing back and forth uh, every weekday. And the bonus, you will get a two hour planning call for your top goals and your strategic action. So it basically helps you um, and give you a two hour VIP session um, for your two goals, one or two goals, plus your strategic actions. That's the part. Getting those strategic actions down really takes, takes time. So that will be a great bonus to help you. That expires on the 15th of June. So I'd really recommend that you get in before then, because also we start on the 18th of June for the first sprint. So, I mean, you can join at any time, but it's better to start, you know, if you can um, join when at the start of the sprint, you really benefit a lot more from it. Actually, I mean, if you join now, you like the, the sooner you join them, the better you can prepare. So that is it. So that is the Fired Up Coaching Academy. And that brings it to an end. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm on time today. So I hope that you benefited from the, um, uh, let me just uh, stop sharing. <laughs> I hope that you benefited from the Ignite Your Inner Coach uh, content. I want you to, you know, I, I would love to have you inside the Fired Up Coaching Academy, but whether you join or not, I really want you to cultivate that inner coach and, you know, think about how you can best support yourself and be your own best cheer leader we have infinite potential inside of us and i think that's what drives me really to become a better coach and to continue to work on myself because it's like well if it's in there it's up to my inner coach to bring it out right <laughs> and i the best way to bring it out is by setting goals and achieving them overcoming yourself doing hard things that's a total game changer and you'll feel proud of yourself and you'll be good inspiration to those around you children if you have them <laughs> it's uh, one of my main motivations so i hope this served you if it did please share it with somebody that you think would benefit from it because there's a lot of people struggling out there and i think they don't realize that that you have such power inside of you to to help yourself and to change and um you just gotta believe in yourself and believe that change is possible for you there was a time in my life where i really didn't know that or understand that and um it's just been a game game changer really a gift for me to discover that and to discover it uh, more and more and to discover the best tools to help ourselves so if you've got any questions message me if you want to have a quick chat with me i'd be very happy to about the part of coaching academy Otherwise, best of luck, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you soon inside the Facebook group. Bye.